Banjo-Kazooie, it's a title that many still consider to be a quintessential point of Nintendo's history. It helped to redefine how a video game could feel at the time, and some games are still taking notes on it to this day. There's sprawling worlds and memorable characters, and just pure personality gushing out of every corner. The consensus is pretty much agreed upon. If you like 3D platformers about collecting things, you'll have to love this one. And I don't. So how could I possibly think this? I just gave the game so many compliments, was I lying? And no, none of this is to say that there aren't things I love here, cause there definitely are. Banjo-Kazooie is just brimming with charm and character. It's clear that Rare closely knew the N64's limitations, as they kept the art style simplistic but still extremely pronounced. Everything looks so bouncy and alive in this game. From the animations, the environments, it's all so pleasing. Just look at the way the first level starts up. How could someone not like this? Wait, this presentation goes a long way to making the worlds feel worthy of exploring. Even in the current day, this is still a legitimately really nice looking product, and that's worth a lot. This goes double for the characters as well, they're amazing. Of course you got Banjo and Kazooie, but Mumbo, Bottles, Gruntilda, my boy Clanker, Gobi, fucking Gloop? Each one of these guys is so charming and likable. A lot of this does come simply from the way they're designed, but an arguably more important source is their writing. This game has a strong sense of humor, and that shines through nearly every character. Reading their dialogue is fun, and it makes the player want to fully explore the places they inhabit. Though most of that can definitely be attributed to the soundtrack done by Grant Kirkhope, which simply makes this game an audible joy. Each and every level is so memorable chiefly thanks to Grant's music. I genuinely cannot think of a track I dislike. And it's dynamic too, giving every location a unique feeling, even when in the same world. It's so good. And this is always where the discussion for Banjo-Kazooie lies, it's presentation. The gameplay is considered an afterthought, if given any thought at all. And that is where I think this game aged poorly, the gameplay. Banjo-Kazooie's foundation is totally fine though. Moderate-sized worlds with challenges to conquer and plentiful items to collect, all for the player to experience at their own pace. Many of my favorite games are structured very similarly. Where Banjo-Kazooie screws up, however, is in the most important aspect of these types of games, the moveset. There is one main way you will be traveling through Banjo-Kazooie, and that is through the Talon Trot, the thing I've been doing in basically all the footage. There is no variation in how you could use this move. You are locked into it and have extremely limited control. You point the analog stick in the direction you want to go and that's it. You can jump, which gives the illusion of faster ground control, but in actuality you go the same speed either way. This is the base of what a character should be in a game, not its most effective move, and there isn't much option other than it anyway. Banjo walking on his own is pitifully slow, and the moves he can do really aren't worth the speed reduction. There is no reason not to use the Talon Trot, and it makes the game just so dull to run through. Running around in a 3D platformer should be fun, there should be some kind of engagement past simply holding forward, but that's all that's really delivered in this game. And when you are asked to actually do more at the moveset than just moving from one place to another, it's a total pace breaker. All of Banjo's other abilities are done outside of Talon Trot, which means you'll be stopping and starting all the damn time, being forced to watch this stupid form change animation that always stops you in your tracks. It very much lacks any feeling of flow, and just makes the moveset feel even weaker as a result. I do really like the concept of unlocking more moves over time, and if these were only problems contained in the first few worlds, I'd be fine with it. But you unlock all the core movement options within the first level. Everything past that is purely contextual. You learn to fly, but only with flight pads. You learn to do a big jump, but only with jump pads. You learn how to run fast, but only with speed shoes. None of these truly add to the moveset, which just feels sorely lacking. Imagine if you could do this big jump anywhere. That would open up to so much more player creativity in how they interact with these worlds. I have been neglecting to mention one move, however, and that's the Wonder Wing, which you can do anywhere, which is good. The problem though is it totally ruins combat. Nearly any confrontation in this game can be solved using the Wonder Wing. You are invincible, and it makes the enemies feel totally pointless when you just plow through them in a second. You do have to collect golden feathers to use this move, which cap at 10, but they're everywhere. And you have no reason to use this move outside of combat, so it's super unlikely you'll ever run out. And again, say it with me, this move doesn't give you any new movement options. Imagine if you became super fast when you use this. You'd have a quick dash you can do to gain speed, but you can't do it too much because you gotta conserve the golden feathers. And that really is the problem with the moveset in this game. It's so basic. It lacks variety. And the Mumbo transformations just exacerbate this flaw. So basically Mumbo here can transform you into bunch of different animals, and this is another great idea. It could be a chance to actually change up the moveset in a meaningful way. They could have the termite be super quick and nimble, 
or have the walrus be the master of water. There's so much creativity to this idea, and they use none of it. Out of the five transformations provided in this game, four of them have you slowly walk by moving the analog stick towards the place you want to go. I am not exaggerating. The termite, crocodile, walrus, pumpkin, all they can do is walk and jump. The crocodile is the only one that even has an attack. This bee is the sole transformation that feels like a true change in the game. You can fly forever, and it feels different from normal flight too. You still can't attack, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. Because with the way they are, you have no reason to use these things other than the select, entirely situational moments. The formula always goes like this. You become the thing, walk very slowly to your destination, do the challenge, and then either walk very slowly all the way back to Mumbo's, or walk very slowly all the way to the level entrance. There's no winning with these, because they're simply not fun. This could have easily been a different way of both exploring the world and conquering challenges. This beehive, for instance, would have been a great time to have transformations matter. You could have Banjo fight the hornets, or as the bee, you could espionage the jiggy from the inside. There is actually a moment of this in Mad Monster Mansion, where this bucket has a little hole in it for the pumpkin to jump through, but you would never want to be the pumpkin for more than required in the first place because of how slow it is. If this game is so insistent on having such hollow movement options, then whatever, but at least streamline it. Why did these transformations move so slow? Why can't I transform whenever I want? How would either of these things hurt the game other than making it faster? The worst example of this is in Freeze Easy Peak, where to fully complete this race, you gotta walk all the way there as the Wallers, win, walk all the way back to Mumbo's, transform back, and then walk all the way there again as Banjo. And this is really where my main problem with the levels comes in. Every world essentially has the same design, where there's a big landmark in the middle, such as a snowman, a boat, a clanker, and then there's a bunch of smaller areas around it. This is a fine groundwork. The main problem is how much empty space there is. A lot of this game is simply using the talent shot to walk between points. For a moveset this barren, these worlds just have way too much ground to cover. The snowman's tide, the ocean around Clanker, the outside of the pyramids, all of Grunty's lair, and loads more places just contain so much gameplay that consists of holding forward at a meddling speed. The only level I find to really stand out is Bubble Gloop Swamp. This is the only place that gives you everything with no empty space in between, and that's how all the worlds should be. There's no fun way of getting between landmarks, so what's the point? And I know that this would make the worlds feel samey, but with a moveset this limited, there's not much else you can do. And this level isn't even all good either, because to get to Mumbo's you gotta walk as slowly as possible through this series of hallways. So thanks game for proving me wrong. But most of the other levels, especially near the end of the game, are just too big for their own good. I do really like larger areas in games, but that's only when they have a strong central movement system supporting them. This frankly becomes boring in a lot of ways, because getting around just isn't fun when you're this limited. And that's sadly what a lot of this game is. And honestly, I'm willing to excuse it, because this game clearly isn't about the movement, it's about the challenges. Each world is 10 jiggies, all of which you can earn by completing certain objectives. And if these are able to provide a fun and engaging experience, then I could definitely forgive some of this game's shortcomings. And these challenges are not that. This game asks you to do the most menial and basic of tasks and presents them as a challenge. Spelling out Banjo-Kazooie using floor tiles, hitting some buttons, playing a matching game, dropping eggs in a basket, copying what's done right in front of you, swimming in a slightly curved line. These are the types of challenges Banjo-Kazooie offers to you and they're nearly all like this. Every so often there will be a Jiggy relying on a tiny bit of brain power, but those are so far and few between. Too often, it's either playing a game of tip-top musical chairs or doing an incredibly simple task. And when the game's main source of challenge is your ability to walk in some lines and complete spelling puzzles, it isn't a challenge, it's a sobriety test. Now I know my ABCs, won't you come and play with me? This game is the epitome of a checklist. It doesn't feel like you're accomplishing anything important within this world, you're just doing busy work. And the way the game attempts to disguise this is by making you do the exact same action multiple times. Shoot this crate three times, shoot this totem four times, shoot the skater six times, kill all the crabs in the same way, kill all the frogs in the same way, kill all the boxes in the same way, kill all the bees in the same way, hit all the arrows, spell banjo kazooie twice, put two eggs in this bucket, put one egg in five of these pots, climb this stupid tree in the same way four times. 
Me just saying all these is probably getting repetitive, and I know, but that's exactly how the game is. Why make me swim through this crank three times? Why make me fly through the star three times? Why not make actual challenges based around these abilities? I understand that the idea is about mastering these moves is handling, but you really couldn't make a more interesting proof of skill than doing the same thing three times? And for most of these other jiggies, what is difficult or even interesting about me doing one thing in one location and then doing that exact same thing again but in another location? I'm fine with repetition if there's a reason for it, and this game does have some instances of that, but they are vastly outnumbered by the waves of sheer monotony. And this is coming from a guy who knows this game inside and out. Yeah, I bet you expected just some Joe Schmo YouTube man who's bad at video games, but no. I have this game on original hardware, with my original 100% save file, and with one other. I know this game, and it just does not hold up. I do think this is a great experience for younger kids, especially to get them into greater games of the genre, but on its own, what you have here is a basic, undemanding, boring experience. I love the way this game looks and sounds, but how it plays is what matters most to me, and Banjo-Kazooie's gameplay just doesn't cut it.